Welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, here's objective two. Going to be able to write a polynomial function given a graph. Or maybe I have just some points that are on that graph. So, uh, for example, take a look at this waterline. This waterline, it's doing something that looks kind of polynomial. So if you had some points that are on the graph, do you see all around the edge, you see an X and a Y axis, you could do something like this. And there's a polynomial function that traces out the contour of that water. That's pretty sweet, isn't it? I did that myself. Um, yeah, so there you go. Look how small that leading coefficient is. 1.3 times 10 to the negative fourth. Ooh, it's tiny. All right, um, so you might remember we, we, we've done this before. We did it with quadratics just not too long ago. Before that, we did it with linear functions. If you're going to write the equation of a linear function, how many points do you need? Two. If you're going to write the equation of a parabola, you usually needed to have Three. The exception was I needed just two if one of them was the vertex. And the reason why is because the vertex counted as two parameters, both the h and the k. Okay, so I needed two for a linear. I needed three for a quadratic. How many do you think I need for a, a, a cubic? Or maybe a quartic? Or maybe a whatever ick? Well, that was, <laughs> that was way slower than... It needed to be uh, very dramatic, though, huh? So, in general, polynomial function has degree n. Then that means you need n plus 1 points in order to come up with the equation. So, if our degree is 2, 2 plus 1, I need 3 points to get it. Now, we might be doing a cubic. Cubic is degree 3. 3 plus 1, I need 4 points in order to come up with the equation for that thing. So, uh, let's look at exercise 6 here. I have a picture of the graph. This should be pretty easy. As a matter of fact, it's even easier than, well, I initially thought I, I should have made it, whatever. And the reason why it's pretty easy is because I give you the zeros. One, two, three. There are three zeros. Cubic equation. We're almost done. So we're going to put this in the form like this, in factored form. The only thing that I'll need out front is a leading coefficient because there's an infinite number of functions that could possibly go through those three zeros. There's only one that's going to go through the point 0, 6 also. So I'm going to start writing my equation like this. y is equal to a. I'll figure out what that a is in just a bit. And the first 0 is negative 2. I write that inside the parentheses in factor form as x plus 2. For the next one, it's negative 1. So I switch the sign because it's got to lie to you, x plus 1. And the last one is at positive 1, switch the sign x minus 1. So here is the equation. If you got that much, you got half of the work done. Last thing that we need to do is find out what this a value is. So this is kind of like um, intercept form whenever it was a quadratic. But now we're doing it for a cubic form. So now I'm just going to take this point, 0, 6, and put that in for x and y into that equation so I can find out what a is. 6 in for y, and put zeros for all the x's. Man, this couldn't be simpler. a times, and then I'd have 2 from the first one, then I'd have 1 from the next one, then I'd have uh, negative 1 from the last one. So 2 times 1 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2a equals 6, and then divide. So a is equal to negative 3. I may have stressed this before. I'm going to stress it again. You're not done. Don't make me assemble your equation for you. Put it together yourself. y is equal to negative 3 times x plus 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 1. And there's our function, our cubic function. Now let's see, does that leading coefficient make sense? It's negative. It is odd to just go to answer, and then negative makes it do that thing, which is what it's doing. It, it makes sense, totally makes sense. So why don't you give it a try? Uh, I, I didn't make a graph for you, but you've got some points there, too. Some of those things are zeros. I want a cubic function that goes through those four points. Go ahead and stop the video right now and try yourself. All right, so, all right, so, all right, so, is this recording? Okay, um, yeah, so is this your answer right here? 
I got an A value of one fourth because one of those zeros was an, a five, so I put it X minus five. Next one was, say, negative four. I didn't put them in order, it doesn't really matter. Um, so change the sign X plus four, and the last one, a two X minus two. Take that point zero ten, stick it in for X and for Y, and solve it for A. And I'm done, right? No. Um, what, what did I forget to do? I forgot to write my equation. Y equals one-fourth times X minus five times X plus four times X minus two. Now I'm officially done. Okay, there's only one, one more part of this and that involves, um, well, what if you just have a collection of data and you want to find the equation, the graph that goes with it, show, uh, We've done regressions before. We've done them for lines, linear regression, find the line of best fit, and we've done them from quadratics. Now we're gonna do them for cubics. The only difference between this regression and all the other ones is a button press. Instead of pushing linear regression or quadratic regression, we choose cubic regression. So here's, here's our setup on this one. So in the table, you've got the number of vehicles Y and thousands fueled by ethanol 85, some sort of alternative fuel, I guess. Um, each year, X from 1999 to 2004. So if I look on the table, zero is gonna correspond to 1999, okay? Handy piece of information. Find a polynomial model for this data and use that model to make a prediction how many vehicles are going to be using ethanol 85 in, in 2010? So how many were there? Because it's an old question now, based on your model. Okay, all right, so uh, let me uh, clear the screen here and let me call up the calculator. So beep, beep, there's the calculator. On, now it's on. Where do I put all this information? I'm going to do a scatter plot, remember, and I put that under the stat menu choose edit and look I already have my numbers in there so type in your numbers um, your 0 1 2 3 4 and L1 and all your Y values there in uh, L2 now uh, why don't you go ahead and pause type those thing in okay you're back so it's always a good idea to check to see if you got these numbers right if I look on the screen right there on L2, the first one, well, the first one looks right. If I look at the, uh, the next, third one down, 100.3 on my screen, but this is supposed to be 100.303. Did it leave off some decimals? If you scroll down, you can see down at the bottom, it still puts all of them in there. What it's only showing you on the screen in the table is whatever it could fit in there. So don't worry, all your numbers are still in there. Okay. So now to do the little scatter plot, remember it is second y equals, go into the first one. So we're in the stat plot menu, go into the first one and highlight on, turn it on. All the defaults should be fine. Now you don't just hit graph, you wanna hit zoom. Since this is a stat plot, we're gonna do zoom stat. Do you remember what number it is? Of course you do, it's number nine. So there it is, picks a perfect window for all your data. You can see it's doing this crazy looking thing right there. Okay, so I have my scatter plot. Now I need to find my cubic regression model. I need to come up with the equation for that. So to get that, it's back under the stat menu. This time we go over to calc and look down at that list. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. I want to do a cubic regression. It's number six there, cubic regression. Hit enter. If you have the newer operating system, if you, if you download the calculator off the website, this is what the screen looks like. Uh, whenever you get it. If it looks like the old one, you'll have to type in L1, comma, L2, those are your X values, your Y value, comma, Y1 if you want it to store it. Here all we have to do is scroll down to store reg equation and then type in Y1. You ordinarily get that from the VARS menu. If you have the new operating system, let me show you a shortcut. It is alpha and then F4, it's the trace button underneath the screen, and it pulls that menu up, and that's the first one that I want. Man, that's pretty handy, isn't it? So it pulls it right in there. Scroll down, let's do our calculate on this. And here's the equation. So uh, go back here, and uh, there it was. I'm, I'm of course gonna have to round that off a bit. 
So um, rounding it off, that's what the thing is going to look like. Let's look back at the graphing calculator here. Let's see how well it went through those, those dots. Let's go to graph. Uh, yeah, it, it, it looks pretty good. All right, so there's my cubic regression model. Uh, the last thing that I needed to do on this was I needed to use this model in order to predict how many vehicles were going to be used in that alternative fuel in um, 2010. 2010, starting from zero. And remember that that corresponded to the year 1999. And we want to know 2010. So in order to get what year that I'm going to input in for x, I've got to subtract those two. So 2010 minus 1999 is 11. I'm going to take 11 and stick it into that equation. Now, um, since I have that equation typed into the calculator into y1, all I have to do back on the home screen is y1 parentheses 11, and it'll find it for me. Let's go back. Go back to the home screen, which is second quit. Do you remember the shortcut again? Alpha F4 then hit enter on Y1. You do need the parentheses on this, so open the parentheses, type in 11, close them, enter, and it's 1044.04. What? Whoops. 4.04. Now this is in thousands, so really I need to move this decimal place over uno, doso, treso places. So that's really how many vehicles I should have expected in 2010 to be using ethanol 85. How accurate is that? Hmm, I don't know. I don't use that kind of gas. So here's one for you to try all by yourself on exercise 9. Do the same steps that we did before. Put it in the graph and calculator. Find the cubic regression model that best fits that data. Okay, pause it and come see me. Okay, so let's assume that you put all of this data into the calculator properly and you did your cubic regression on it. I think this is what you're supposed to have gotten right here. So y equals 2 point blah, 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 that equation right there. I don't want to read it off. You can take a look at it. Pause it if you need to. Um, all right, so that's about it. That wraps it up. So, oh, okay, well, all right. So, yeah, there was the... The, the answer again. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the net. Oh, okay. Well, all right. So there's really, really the answer now. So, all right, there. Finally, that wraps up the last lesson here on writing polynomial functions. We were able to look at a sequence of numbers with equally spaced x values. So first, second, third, fourth, and looked at the y values and saw what they went up by. Whatever they go up by, those are called the finite differences. And if those finite differences are constant, at some level, we should be able to find a polynomial function that comes up with them. Uh, third order means it's cubic, second order means it's quadratic, and so on. Then we also were able to have a collection of points, maybe from a picture of a graph, or maybe even from uh, like a set, of, a set of data from a table, and come up with a, a cubic equation that fits that model, that fits that graph. So here is your assignment, and uh, we're pretty much all done here. I can count fi finger it numbers. <laughs> finger it numbers, Rowan, that's pretty clever. Bye.